So it's time has just been released. Now we can do instant segmentation where we just choose a point, a prompt or whatever, the exact same way as the same two model and track it across a video. This can run on the end now. It's significantly faster. If we just look at a comparison here, it's 2.3 times faster on an 800 compared to same two and 22 times faster on an iPhone. So it's only going one direction. These models are becoming faster, better, and basically are very good at tracking across frames in a video. So here's the GitHub repo, they already have 420 stars, just released Apache 2.0 license. So this is an open source model from Facebook research. We're gonna read a bit about the paper, they have a demo, they have a hog and face based demo in here. You can basically just choose the points that you want to track. So right now, let's just see if we can track the, the shirt here or the whole guy, it will segment it out and then we can hit track. It will generate the video. We'll just take a few seconds and we'll get the results out. So this is how you can just test it very fast on the hog and face space. They have the paper here as well. If you want to know more details about how it works, go into some of the theory. This video here, we're going to spin up a Google Colab notebook so we can run it. If we go inside the GitHub repo again, they have the notebooks. They also have a clone of same two. We have the images, videos. Let's go in and grab the uh, notebook. So we're going to grab the image predictor and the video predictor as well. So let's download this file. Just download the raw file. There we go. So this is basically just what we can spin up in a Google Colab notebook. We also need the full repo so we can clone that so we have the images and videos as well. Now we can open up a Google Colab notebook. Colab. Let's see if it's done in here. There we go, we have output video. I'm just going to download it. This guy here is moving a bit fast, but it still keeps track of him across the video. The mask is not as perfect as M2, but it's also significantly faster and could definitely be used for some auto labeling. Our Google Colab notebook, we can even just clone it. We don't need to download the file first of all. So let's just open a new notebook. Make sure that we run with GPU acceleration. You're loading. Why oh, is it not loading? There we go. Runtime, change runtime type. We can set it to whatever we want. Right now, let's just run it. Let's try to run it on the 800. First of all, the first step that we need to do is git clone. There we go. Let's go ahead and check the GitHub repo. If we need to do anything else, we can clone it, we can CD into it, and then we can pip install it. If you want to run the notebook examples, we can also install it in this specific way here. So we're just going to do that. Right now we have cloned it. Then we need to CD into it. I forgot this one here, so git clone. There we go. And then we can have presented CD into Edstam. Once it's done, there we go. We have it cloned here now. Now we will CD into it. Then the next step that we need to do is just pip install. That should be it pretty much. Let's close the release notes. It's obtaining the files. After it has done that, we can basically just open up uh, the notebook, convert it in here, and then we can run it step by step. Notebooks have the video predictor. It's actually just gonna download it. It's maybe fine, we can just take it step by step here and uh, throw it in. So this is how you can set it up from scratch. Could also just go in here, upload it, so we can just upload the notebook. Then it will open up a, a separate one. It's fine to go step by step. So what we're doing here, we're just importing the different uh, packages and modules that we need. Right now it's still running the pip install. The second step here is to set up some device. So right now we're just using CUDA. If MPS is available, if you're on Apple hardware, it's gonna use that or else it's just gonna run on CPU. Here we can use floating point 16 bits. We can run that after. Still trying to pip install it up here at the top. The next steps that we're going to do is just set up the endpoints. 
or set up the predictor. So we have our checkpoints file. So if you go inside here, we have download checkpoints to shell script. So this is what it's going to do, but we have this itstam.pt. This is the checkpoint that we're going to grab. And then we have the model configuration. See, it's taking a bit longer than, uh, than it should. Could probably just pip install everything. Start canceling. It's not gonna run this. Maybe it just takes a bit longer to install. And then we're gonna have a function here to show the mask, show bounding box, and show the points that we are creating. This is the videos.bedroom. So this is basically just some videos examples they have available directly. Then we're going to scan all the JPEG frames in the directory and basically just show it here. So let's just run it a bit here. And let's come back once it's done generating or pip installing it. Okay, so now it's done running. It took around four or five minutes. Let's not just make sure that all the other ones here are working fine. Now we should not get an error here. So configuration solved. Download the, or grab the edstamp PT. And we also have the model configuration. And then it's just gonna build the um, predictor here. Uh, let's make sure that we're in here. So right now we don't need to go back. We're just inside endpoints or checkpoints. So our model is now ready. We create our show mask function, show points, show bounding boxes, and the videos are also just gonna be in here. Now we will run this one here. So videos, let's make sure. So that should be inside notebooks. And then we have videos. Notebook videos bedroom. There we go. Now we grab frame zero. So this is the frame that we're actually going to run through a model and then do our tracking on top of. So it's gonna grab the next step here. We have this one, this is the frame ID, predictor, reset. There we go, now we run our inference. So what we're going to do here is just take the video directory, predictor, init the state. Frame loading is just going to load all 200 frames from our video. We can reset the state here after. Something here crashed now. Let's just try to see if we can build it again. So uh, for some reason it were crashed. Let's just try to rerun it. This one here should be good. Don't need to give it access to Hawk and Face. Checkpoints, we should see the intern. Some live debugging here. Model ready. Show. Show. Let's hope it's not it doesn't crash now. It shouldn't run out of memory or anything. It should be it should be able to run here. So now we've got the inference state. We reset the state here. See, now it ran successfully. We just crashed the session before. Now we should be able to go in and basically set up our points. So we're just going to grab an arbitrary point. You can choose this with your mouse or whatever. It could be a bounding box that you want to initialize with, but this is just a single point that we throw into it. We add new points or box. So we can also take a bounding box. And it can take a list of points as well. We throw it into the predictor. We take our inference state, the frame frame index, object ID for the annotation ID, our points, and also our labels. So now we should be able to pass it in, and it will actually like run the inference. So this is frame zero. This is the point. So the shorts of this kit here is what we're actually like going to track across time. There we go. Still looks good. Next one here the frame rate that they interact with, and then we give it a unique ID for each of them. So this will just be 
another frame that we are passing through it or two points we're going to use two points so now we both take the shorts and also just we want to try to track the whole kit here throughout the video sequence looks like they're jumping in the bed now we're going to grab the video segments again it's just going to be individual frames but it still has it tracked over time so visualization frame stride it's going to use that as 30 propagate in video so it's going to process 200 frames that we have in our video so inference state this is where we have stored all the images as we remember before so now it's going to process all the frames if we can catenate all frames together we pretty much just get the video but we can play the video in here in google colab notebook so now we can see we act like tracks it pretty nice here across the frames and we're skipping the 30 frames as we have here in the frame stride if we only have a frame stride of one it's going to take every single frame but we don't really need to do that because we track it very nicely across all frames here let's go down grab the next one so here we just refine some of the details in the mask frame 150 before refinement and after refinement so now we can see that we act like excluded some points you can both include and also exclude points in the mask in the exact same way as we can do with sam and all the other models and so on this is just significantly faster the mask is still pretty much perfect around the, the boundaries here so it looks very good now we can propagate it through the whole video and basically just run the whole video through with our optimizations so it's going to process the 200 frames again while it's doing that we can reset our predictor and then we can go in and grab a bounding box after so now we can see it processes all frames with the final results so we can always going to reset the state and then go in and run a new run so we, if we want to track another object or basically just basically done tracking that optics right now we want to track the girl here so right now we're going to choose a bounding box so it's going to be a full bounding box around her this could be initialized by some other optic detection model you can maybe use yolo world to describe the optics that you want to track it's going to initialize that one so now we have our box we have our labels and we also have our points there we go we have the image we can propagate it through all the frames and do it on the video just to see how it works and if you run the video it's going to work in the exact same way as we had in here with the results this is the exact pipeline it's running it's just concatenating the images instead this needs to run on a gpu so if you don't have one available you can use the free gpu resource in here on google colab pretty much perfect mass that we get around it so easy to work with you can see how easy it is to spin up we just ran through a couple of examples you can go through more of them here they have the notebooks available both for images and also videos but i just want to show you guys how easy it is to set up what each individual step is doing all it's doing grab some points throw it into the model do inference on frames and then it will also track it across the frames as well we can do the refinements by excluding points as well this is very very valuable but we throw all the images into the predictor at the same time so it doesn't just do individual predictions on individual images but across like spatial inference as well across the frames in the video so we keep track of it even if it goes behind some object or some parts are included and so on occluded we're going to still keep track of the object this is very cool. It's only going in one direction. We'll get better models. We'll get more accurate models. We'll get faster models. This can already run real time on an iPhone. It's gonna be better even on Nvidia hardware here running real time. Could be very cool if you can just prompt the system to take this object here. It's just gonna track it across one camera. It could be multiple cameras and so on as well. It will be possible in the future. Stay tuned for more videos. Wanted to show you guys the whole notebook here. Very easy to play around with. Try it out yourself.